Who are you? Please introduce yourself. I'm Marissa Marecki. I'm an occupational therapist. I work in a dual role where I spend part of my week in a clinic treating as an occupational therapist and the rest of my week in a research lab working as an occupational therapist on research studies and also assisting with other activities in the lab. Please tell us why you started the research section of the newsletter. Mm. The first goal is to get the relevant literature closer to the clinicians. So by providing easy to read summaries to clinicians, they can identify strategies in the strategies that might be relevant to their practice and also identify groups and journals that are doing work that is relevant to them. The second goal is to um, get clinicians more engaged in the research process. So this can include writing their own studies or case reports, but also communicating with the um, practitioners that are producing research and editors of journals to make things more relevant to them. Can I ask a question? Yes. How long does it take you to produce the um, research synopsis that you provide for the GoTo newsletter? It depends on the um, newsletter. Some um, quarters have a lot more research than other quarters that are relevant, um, but definitely a couple hours of reading through journal articles and trying to summarize and pick out the most um, relevant pieces for our clinicians. And if um, other clinicians wanted to submit journal articles to get your opinion, would that be something that you'd be interested in like doing yeah. a summary of that article for them? Yeah, I'd be happy to look at the article and see if it's something that is you know, methodologically sound um, and also relevant to a broad number of clinicians. Cool. Uh, to tell us what study used this outcome measure? The outcome measure that we're going to talk about today is called the Modified Fatigue Impact Scale. And this was actually used in a study called a randomized control trial of a telephone delivered physical activity and fatigue self-management intervention in adults with multiple sclerosis. This study was conducted by Matthew Plow and his colleagues and it was summarized in the November 2019 GOTA newsletter. That's interesting. Tell me more. This study basically looked at two different telephone delivered interventions for individuals with MS. The first intervention was a physical activity intervention alone, and the second intervention was that physical activity intervention in combination with a fatigue management intervention. These two intervention groups were um, compared with the contact control group, which means that this group was called the same number of times as the participants in the intervention group, but they didn't receive any education or intervention from the clinician. And the intervention groups received regular phone calls. Some of these phone calls were group phone calls, and these were the phone calls where the actual content of the intervention was delivered, and then some of the phone calls were um, individual phone calls. And these were phone calls where clinicians would talk with the participant and see how their um, intervention plan was going, they would assess progress towards goals, and then adjust the intervention as needed. The researchers in this study used a battery of um, self-report measures, and also accelerometer data to um, measure the outcomes of the study. Measure. Accelerometer mm -hmm. is essentially like um, what you have in your iPhone that tracks how many steps you do. It's just looking at activity. Gotcha. So it's like okay. a motion monitor. Yes. Gotcha. How accurate do you think they are? How accurate do you think your iPhone accelerometer is? <laughs> mm -mm. I don't think mine works very well. I think it's a ballpark. You can tell days that they're more active and less active, like mm -hmm. in comparison to themselves. Um, and that's kind of mostly what we're looking at. Or like, you know, are they actually increasing their activity over time in comparison to their own baseline? So I think in that way, um, it was a valid um, outcome measure. But again, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of activity um, that isn't able to be managed via accelerometer. So, um, you know, my mom plays a lot of piano and organ, and mm -hmm. you can't measure that via accelerometer, yeah, yeah. but she's working really hard, and it is a really physical task to do. Yeah, you know? holding your arms up, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. How was this outcome measured in the study? Um, this outcome measure was used repeatedly. So it was used at baseline, which was conducted two weeks before the intervention. Um, which is a little atypical. Many times baseline is conducted like the day the intervention starts or the day before the intervention starts. Um, and then it was used immediately after completion of the treatment and then 12 weeks after the completion of the treatment. The measure was administered over the phone by a clinician and it was used to determine the change in self-reported fatigue of the participants before and after participating in the different types of exercise programs. What kind of questions are on the outcome measure? The outcome measure 
includes questions about a person's cognitive functioning, such as their attention or processing speed, and also their physical functioning, such as their endurance or their coordination. Um, participants score how frequently their fatigue impacts their participation and their performance in various everyday activities on a scale of zero to four, from never to almost always. How would I measure this in the clinic? The modified fatigue impact scale is actually a smaller section of the larger multiple sclerosis quality of life inventory. Um, this smaller section is validated for use inside of the larger battery of assessments and also as a standalone assessment. Um, the assessment, the administration, and the scoring instructions are all available for free on the National Multiple Sclerosis Society website. Um, the full version of the Modified Fatigue Impact Scale takes about 5 to 10 minutes, it's 21 questions, and the modified version is 5 of those 21 questions, and it takes about 2 to 3 minutes to complete. It can be administered over the phone or in person by a clinician, like it was in the study, or you can actually give it to their participant and they can fill it out themselves. Um, you can use it similar, similarly to how it was used in the study, so you can have the person do it before and after an intervention that you're interested in learning how it affects that person's fatigue, um, or you can use it at the beginning of your relationship with a patient or a client to determine priorities and goals. Um, because that the participant can fill it out themselves, you can have them take it home and do it as homework and either bring it to your next session or they can mail it to you if you administered it to them on their last session. Okay, so how often would I have the patients fill this out? So the instructions for the measure ask participants to rate the impact of their fatigue on their engagement and activities in the past four weeks, so you shouldn't give it to them more frequently than every four weeks.